It is, as you can tell, a beautiful Friday night here in downtown Cincinnati as the Reds, after a very, very disappointing road trip to Pittsburgh and Baltimore, are back home at Great American Ballpark. Start of a homestand tonight that begins with a three-game series against the New York Mets right here on Fox Sports Ohio. And hi, and a pleasant Friday evening, everyone, and welcome to Reds Baseball. Jim Kelch along with Chris Welsh. Jim Day will be along a little bit later on. But when you look at the Reds lineup card tonight, you'll see what we would call a more normal lineup that Brian Price has used most of the year. But, Chris, one of the names in there is not from the normal state of affairs for the Reds this year. That's Jason Bourgeois. Well, Jason Bourgeois is no rookie. I mean, he's been around a little bit. He's got a number of different major league jerseys. In fact, he's got parts of seven seasons in the major leagues. What he brings is good defense and little speed. He's got a quick bat. At one time, he stole more than 30 bases for the Houston Astros a few years ago. And he's beginning to make his mark already. Last couple of ball games, he's three for six. A couple of runs scored. So you don't know how much opportunity you're going to get here in the month of September. When you get it, you've got to take advantage of it. And so far, Jason Bourgeois has done that. Yes, indeed he has. Now, when we take our attention to the pitching mound tonight, Alfredo Simon, 13-game winner, encouraging and that the last two times out he's pitched pretty well. Well he's pitched seven innings in each of those ball games and the damage in the last game against the Pittsburgh Pirates was in the first inning. That's what he's got to be afraid of with especially with a ball club like the Reds are not scoring a lot of runs right now. But this was the game he pitched against the Braves. Outstanding. He nailed down his 13th win in that ball game. And then when he went into Pittsburgh and pitched, that's when they gave up some home runs in the first inning. He only gave up three runs overall. He really buckled down after they got those runs, but that was enough for the Pirates to prevail. Now his mound opponent tonight looking for his 13th win of the year. I guess we could call him the ageless wonder Bartolo. Well, Pelham. ageless as in 41 years old, 17 seasons. This guy has been around a long, long time. We're going to talk a lot about Bartolo Colon. And the interesting thing, he's done it with really two pitches. No trick pitches. He throws his fastball over 80% of the time. He throws a slider, and that's it. So if you're guessing up there at the plate, you've got a 50-50 chance of being right against Bartolo Colon. All right, well, we'll see how it shakes down tonight. The first of a three-game series, the Reds and the New York Mets for their lone visit to Great American Ballpark this year. They are, as Jim Day will explain when we come back, an unwelcome guest here in the Queen City.
go further by Cincinnati USA Regional Tourism Network. Stay close to CincinnatiUSA.com. And by Skyline Chili. Feeling good? It's Skyline time. It's definitely going to be warm and humid through the game. Temperatures will be around 87 with a very slight chance for a couple of showers or isolated downpours. We'll see partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies. Temperatures by the final out will be around 78 degrees. Let's go Reds. And thank you, Jim Day. I'm on the field. And if I were to ask you who has the best winning percentage of an opponent here at Great American Ballpark, teams that come to mind, maybe the Cardinals, maybe the Dodgers, etc., the team that has the best winning percentage, you probably wouldn't have guessed. And it's our Elk and Elk Storylines brought to you by Elk and Elk. Serious lawyers for serious injuries. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. It is tonight's opponent, the New York Metropolitans. 21-14 and 14 all time here at GABP. A 600 winning percentage just ahead of the Dodgers, Phillies. And how about the Astros? 40 and 35. A 533 winning percentage. And the Reds, yes, they had some down years in those mid-2000s. 529 winning percentage at home. Well, let's wipe out all those numbers. How about a victory tonight? Billy Hamilton and the Reds go after the Mets on Irish Heritage Night. Reds trying to get back on track. We are back with lineups and first pitch after this on Fox Sports Ohio. home against the New York Mets beginning a three game series and as Jim Day mentioned down on the field earlier it is hot Irish heritage night here at GABP as the Reds take the field. Terry Collins is the skipper of this New York team in his fourth year and here's the lineup that he presents tonight for the first game of this three game get together brought to you by Meyer. Lagaris then Decker and right at the top. Duda has done very well. Four home runs, a plus 300 average against the Reds in his career in the cleanup spot. Darno catches, then Granderson, the longtime Yankee, turned Met this year. Dilson Herrera at second. Wilmer Flores at uh, shortstop, and Bartolo Colon on the mound, batting ninth for New York. On the mound for the Reds, making start number 28, Alfredo Simon. Well, Alfredo Simon getting start number 28. He's 13 and 9 on the year. He got that 13th win just a couple of starts ago against the Atlanta Braves. This is start number 47 of his major league career. So obviously the vast, vast majority of the starts that he's had in his career at 33 years of age has been this year. And he's made the most of it. Of those 27 starts, he's got 19 quality starts. So he has been really a measure of consistency all year long, especially in the first half when he ran his record to 12 and 3. 
And after two years out of the Reds bullpen in 12 and 13 he made his first Cincinnati start against this Mets team out at City Field back on the 6th of April a 2 1 Reds win. He's ready to go here. Juan Lagares leads things off. First pitch in there a called strike and we are off and running from GABP in this Friday night September the 5th. Yeah, the numbers from that start out at uh, City Field on April the 6th. That may have been his most efficient game of the year. In those seven innings, he only threw 79 pitches. He got ahead of all the hitters. They were swinging the bats early. I mean, he really dominated the Mets that night. Lagares comes in at 284 with four home runs. He's driven in 44 runs. He'll be followed here in the first inning by Matt Dendecker and then David Wright. These teams come in the identical records. Hard to believe. Mets are 14 games back of the Washington Nationals and the Reds are 11 games back in the division behind the Cardinals. Looking back at the box score and that's a strike three called on a check swing by Lagares rung up by the first base umpire Mark Ripiger. Well, Alfredo Simon wanted it checked right away. And Mesoraco asks for it after Al si Al Simon's pointing down at him, so he got his wish there with a first man strikeout. Yeah, looking back at the box score of that game in which he threw against the Mets very early, Ike Davis had two hits against him. He is, of course, no longer here. He's with the Pirates and has been most of the year. Lagares had an RBI single in that game, and Eric Young Jr. had a double. Now Matt Dendecker has been the everyday left fielder for this Mets club. Comes in at 238 with five runs batted in. And up and down a couple of times between here and their AAA club at Las Vegas. Had a very nice year at AAA hitting 334. 46 RBIs. Mets come off an open date yesterday. They won their game Wednesday against the Miami Marlins down there four to three. So they take two out of three in Miami and come in here like the Reds. Sixty six wins. Seventy four losses. The standings they are fourth place. Fourteen games out. Reds fourth place in the central. Eleven games out. That hit by Lagares in the first game between these two teams at Simon Pitch. That's the only hit in 21 at bats that this Mets lineup tonight has lifetime against Alfredo Simon. He walks Den Decker, so he's the first base runner of this game. Take a little look at the Reds defensively behind Simon, brought to you by your Ford dealers. Bourgeois, Hamilton, and Bruce left to right. Frazier, Santiago, Phillips, and Pena, third to first, the battery of Mesoraco and Simon. Alfredo been a little bit better here at home this year than he has been on the road in terms of ERA, 3.11 here, 3.42 away, but he has one more win away, seven wins away from GABP, six here at home. Here's David Wright. Wright starts the game at 265. Eight home runs. He's driven in 62. Yeah, those numbers are well off the expectations that all Mets fans have for David Wright. I mean, after all, he's a glue that keeps his team together. Strong fielding third baseman great arm good leader all that kind of stuff, but he's been bothered by neck and shoulder problems really all year long. That's why he has had somewhat of a disappointing number, but you know he was quoted as saying very recently that he feels much better now he feels dangerous at the plate, which is a bad time for other people and he is the type of player that we've seen in the past go on tears where he just really carries a ball club for a couple of weeks. Let's hope it does not start here. 
Nice block there by Mezzarocco. He's a really good fastball hitter. He likes the ball down out over the plate, holds his hands very high, does David Wright. Now 31 years old. Went four for 14 down in Miami in their series prior to coming here. But yeah, by any measuring stick, his career average is 25 homers, 101 RBIs, and he's nowhere near those numbers this year. He'll shoot this ball into right center for a hit with a runner going, Dan Decker. He's going to end up at third. The Mets have them at the corners with one out. It's a good little bit of hitting right there by David Wright. I mean, he was looking for something away, didn't want to force the issue by trying to get out there and pull it. And that ball was supposed to be inside, but it ran out over the play a little bit for him. Well, the Mets, who have won six of their last 10 games, looked at it on the board early in this one here in Cincinnati. There's that Irish heritage look the Reds have going tonight. The green hats, the green piping and lettering on the uniforms. The shamrock on the shoulder. Yeah, Brian Payne looks like a big leprechaun, doesn't he? I'm not agreeing or disagreeing with that. <laughs> I know the Reds, and, and they've done it recently in spring training, wore green hats on uh, St. Patrick's Day, but. Back in your day, and maybe even before or after, certainly before, I believe, they used to wear this type of uniform in spring, didn't they? They did indeed. And they've never done this type of thing during, as at least as my recollection, during the regular season. You've had throwback days where you have jerseys from certain eras being worn. Mm -hmm. So we have to keep reminding people, if they just happen to tune in, that this is actually a Reds game. Yeah, the Reds are wearing green tonight. How about that? It's the first of three consecutive games here at the ballpark this weekend that honor a different uh, heritage night, Irish Heritage Night. Tomorrow afternoon in the 4 10 game, it's German Heritage Game. And then Sunday afternoon, Hispanic Heritage Day. So, what do they wear tomorrow? A little Bavarian vest? I was thinking of that uh, the same thing myself. We'll have to wait and see. With a couple of mugs hanging off your belt? That'll be after the game. I do remember these jerseys though being unveiled at Reds Fest last December. Runner going very late on the throw. Stolen base number eight for David Wright. That kind takes the Mets out of double play situation. Yeah, a little sneak attack by David Wright. And you know, he does the same type of stolen base as Todd Frazier does. Very small lead, although he doesn't take the same type of lead where he's facing second base. But it's always a very small lead where he kind of puts the pitcher at ease. So you don't even think you have to throw over. He goes on your first move. Next thing you know, he's got a stolen base. Only eight of them on a year. But both of them now in scoring position for Lucas Duda. Boy, this guy's got some kind of power. Watching him take batting practice. Only four home runs away from the 30 mark. Well, it is a career high for him this year, both in home runs and RBIs. He's six of 26 long ones, 77 runs batted in. Alfredo's not doesn't look like he's in a hurry to throw him a fastball either. It looks like he's throwing them all off-speed pitches there. Not the kind of inning that you want as a starting pitcher. I mean, you love to go up there and just go one, two, three and get off the field. But you know, this is where you may earn or your win or lose the game in the first inning by letting this get out of hand. He gave up three his last time out against the Pittsburgh Pirates. That's all they got and that's all they needed. He did. Next swing, he gets Duda for out number two. So two strikeouts here by Alfredo Simon in the first. He's two thirds of the way home and now we'll deal with the catcher. Travis Darno. Good scouting report right there because look where all those pitches are. Every one of the five pitches that Simon throws is down in the zone, diving into the dirt right there. And evidently it was do not elevate a fastball to this guy, and they didn't come close to doing it. Darno, the catcher, offers it the first one and fouls it away. Completely different scouting report, obviously. 
They came right after him with cheese right down the middle at 95. You can tell where he holds his hands. He he better get those hands working because that thing was right there and he was late and found a straight back. He's been up and down a couple of times between New York and Las Vegas this year. Overall here at 237 with a dozen home runs. Driven in 34. How long have the Mets had their triple A in Las Vegas? Not very long. A couple of years. I thought it was the Padres for a long time. It was Toronto for a short period. I think it's been New York now two or three years. They used to be down at Tidewater for, I mean, forever. Yes, they were. Down in Norfolk area. You're exactly right. And good bass fishing right around those ponds by that old Tidewater ballpark. That was Met Park, was it not? It was. Play yeah. down there, yeah. Yeah, it'd be big by now. It was good to see before the game you get together with one of the guys that we tell stories about all the time Howard Kelvin your old announcer in Indianapolis when you were playing triple A and you and he were just uh, simply no, Howard simply known as the voice in Indianapolis he has been calling Indianapolis Indians games for ever close to 40 years unbelievable you mentioned a team one year and he started naming names of every position of that club they sit in the left by. Darno, that'll get a run home. The other runner is held at third by Tim Tuffle. And the Mets jump in front one nothing on an RBI single by Darno. RBI 35 for him. Yeah, they kept persisting with that fastball, and eventually Darno got the hang of the speed of it. And he gets that ball just about belt high and laces it in the left field. Bourgeois throw went over the head of Pena, the cutoff man, but a nice one hop throw to the catcher, Mazzarocco, holding the runner at third base, David Wright. Here now is Curtis Granderson. This guy's got a chance to hit a home run if he gets his right pitch. He's got 16 of them on the year. The end of the game at 210 in his first year as a Met, his first year in the National League, longtime Tiger, longtime Yankees player. There are those power numbers. Hammers this one, but luckily to the left of Pena and a foul ball. Signaled that way by Mark Ripperger, the first base umpire. Granderson is in a major drought. He comes into this game. Oh, for his last 18. No for nine in the Miami series. Oh, for 18 and two for his last 31. Look at that number there. Two outs and runners in scoring position right near the bottom. Although, boy, you hate to see that name of Brian Payne in there. Yeah, that's a number that we know, but I admit probably Brian Price, obviously, with all the statistics and the preparation that they do before a series. But it's probably not something that Alfredo Simon knows. Like all he knows about Curtis Granderson is that at one time he was one of the best outfielders in the American League, and he's going to pitch very carefully to him here in the first inning with a couple of runners on. Ahead 0-2 though. Granderson, one of the big acquisitions in the offseason for the Mets. He signed a four year, $60 million deal at 33 years old. Certainly not the kind of year that the Mets envisioned. Certainly no. not the kind of year that Granderson envisioned. You know, he had a good month of June, but outside of that, he has not done much at all. 153 in the month of August. And trying to limit the damage here in the first to one. Chris mentioned that last time out against Pittsburgh, that three run first inning homer by Neil Walker turned out to be all the Pirates did need in that one. Here he is pushing 30 pitches in the inning. That'll get a lather going on a night like this. Well, you get ahead of him 0 and 2, and then you start nibbling, nibble. And all of a sudden, you look up now, and it's 3 2. And the runner is going to be off, so a ball in the gap is going to score two if he happens to get one out there. You have to throw this pitch here with the same conviction that you threw the first two. 
Believe in it. Let it go. Pena moves behind the runner at first Darno. Now he takes off and there's a foul ball that keeps the veteran Granderson alive. Yeah, we talked about the first time that Alfredo Simon faced the Mets. He pitched seven innings and only threw 79 pitches. This next pitch will be his 31st, and he's only recorded two outs in the game. Darno off and running again. That ball is flared into left field. That's a base hit. Right will score. Darno to third, and now he will stop there as Bourgeois gets the ball back in. Down at second is Granderson. That almost looked like a check swing double, didn't it? Well, it looked like an off speed pitch. It was the second or third off speed pitch. I think it was a splitter that he throws, and it's going down and away. It is a splitter, and it's going down and away. And really, not all that bad of a pitch, but after seeing so many pitches in the at bat, Granderson, I don't care what the guy's hitting. This guy has been in his past a pretty doggone good major league player. And he punches it high right by the third baseman who swung around a little bit towards the left side. And he ends up with a double. I think the Mets, Tim Temple down there at third base, may have done the Reds a little bit of a favor by holding Darno because I thought for certain he was going to end up coming around to score on that. They held him at third base. Well, it's the third time now, third time in the last four games that the Reds have given up multiple runs. In the first inning, of course, that disaster last night, six in the first against Mike Leake, four in the first on Tuesday in Baltimore against Matt Latos, three in the first last Saturday down in Pittsburgh. That's Dilson Herrera. We got to come right after this guy. Herrera spent this year in double A. Those are his big league numbers, a homer, five RBIs. Double A this year, actually high A and double A. 323 with 13 homers, 71 RBIs, only 20 years old. RBI single by Darno, RBI double by Granderson. Two nothing Mets lead here in the top of the first. Well, Herrera was the player that was it is a the player to be named later. How many times do we hear that? And you never sometimes know who he is. Well, this was the guy. He was originally signed out of Columbia, the country of Columbia, by the Pittsburgh Pirates as a free agent in 2010. Then last August, at the very end of August, he was traded by the Pirates to the Mets for John Buck and Marlon Byrd. In the air to right center, Bruce calling. Innings over, but damage done. The Mets get a pair on three hits. They leave two, and after one half, taking a two nothing lead.
two to nothing as they come calling here in the bottom of the first. Brian Price, his lineup card, as we look at it for tonight's game, much different than last night. Save Jason Bourgeois, the regulars back in there as we talked about on the open. Hamilton, Frazier, and Mezzarocco at the top. Four hits, four bats last night for Mezzarocco. Bruce, Phillips, Pena in the middle. There's Jason Bourgeois batting seventh out in left field. Santiago, shortstop hitting eighth. Alfredo Simon pitching and batting ninth against the 41 year old Bartolo Colon. I mean, that's really all you have to say right here is Bartolo Colon. 17 years in the major leagues. Of course, we remember him first as a member of the Cleveland Indians. 5'11", 285 pounds is what they list him on baseball reference. Indians signed him as a free agent in 1993. He was pitching in the big leagues in 97 when his man at second base, Dilson Herrera, who made that last out, was a three-year-old. Well, he was signed before Herrera was born. He gets ahead of Hamilton 0 and 2. And the really remarkable thing about Cologne is that he does it with two pitches. And now they're no longer overpowering. There was a time when he was, you know, dialing it up in the mid 90s. In the mid 90s for the Cleveland Indians, one of the harder throwers in baseball. But that fastball now averages about 89, 88, 90 miles an hour, but he still throws it. 80 to 85 percent of the time, he throws a little slider. Occasionally, he throws a changeup, hardly at all. But he still won 12 games this year with a respectable earned run average right at four. And it would be in the three, save that last time out when he allowed six runs and five and a third against Philadelphia. I mean, we rave about Alfredo Simon and the 19 quality starts that he's had, right? And he's had a terrific year in All Star. Well, Cologne. Has had 17 quality starts. So he's only two behind Simon. They signed him into a two year deal. There was a loss that you're talking about right there, Jim, when he was pitching against the Phillies. Give up six runs, and he got beat around a lot now. He's been going back and forth to the Dominican Republic several times in the last few weeks. He finally went back to the funeral of his mom. So he's had a lot of travel on under his belt here. He went down when she was ill. He went back down again, of course, for the, the funeral and all. So that was had probably had something to do with him, you know, being tired and that start against the Phillies. Now he gets Billy Hamilton looking for the first out of this game. Now deals with Todd Frazier. Hit hard, but foul. At Cologne, you know, they signed him into a two year deal. And so the Mets owe him about $9 million, and they, they passed through waivers. Nobody claimed him. And maybe they were afraid of being 42 years old and being owed $9 million. I mean, based on what he's done this year, he's had 26 starts. How much different can he be? Hit hard in the center by Todd Frazier. That's a hit cut off out there by the center fielder Lagaris. There's Frazier trying to stretch that to a double, and Lagaris guns him down with a throw to Herrera, the second baseman. That'll go down as a single and an 8 4 put up. Well, I'm not sure if Todd Frazier knows the same scouting report about Juan Lagaris that we know, but he is one of the best defenders in baseball. In fact, they're talking about him winning a gold glove in center field. And that's a gold glove play right there. You know, and I don't mind Frazier doing that. With the way this team is going right now, they're not stringing three or four hits in an inning together. That took a remarkable play by the center fielder to make it. But the word on Lagares is that he can do that. Some guys can't. He's got the arm from center field to be able to nail you. So with two out now, here's Mezzarocco. What a night he put up last night in Baltimore. Hammers this one on an off speed pitch to left. Nearing the wall is Dan Decker. That ball gone. Home run. Mazzarocco number 22. RBI number 70. 
get a solo shot last night. He comes back with another one here tonight. Well, he is on some kind of fire right now is Mezzarocco. That's a slider. And that's not coming back. Last seven games, 11 for 22 now with seven runs batted in. Ripped to first, off the glove of Duda. He'll recover in time. Dive to the bag. There's no such thing as PFP with Bartolo on the mound. Bruce is out, and the inning is over. Another look at Mezzarocco's home run, number 22, as we go out. One incomplete here on this Friday night. Two to one next. About to take your Reds questions on the game day live page. Buckeyes have a trio of running backs looking to fill the void left by Carlos Hyde and a couple of Ohio boys at the University of Missouri return to their home state this weekend to face the Toledo Rockets. Get complete coverage of all of today's action involving Ohio sports on FoxSportsOhio.com. 2-1 Mets after one here on this Friday night at Great American Ballpark. Number eight hitter is Wilmer Flores. He leads things off for the Mets against Alfredo Simon. Flores at a ball on the strike. Brings a five-game hitting streak into this game, Flores. Which equals a career best for him. is playing shortstop. They started the year. Ruben Tejada, their 24 year old at shortstop, but Tejada has just not performed well this year, so much so that they finally made him into a bench player. Boy. One hops the wall on and right. Jay will get it back in, but in the second with a double is Flores. For the shortstop, that is his eighth of the year. Mets already now have four hits. I think he really surprised everybody with his power opposite field there. Of course, a warm night here in Cincinnati. We haven't had all that many. That's a hanging slider pretty much right down Broadway. Jay Bruce playing him rather shallow, and you would think that'd be the spot for him. Getting down the number eight spot. Not much power at all, but he burns the Reds there with a leadoff double. Now you're perfect for Cologne to try to do something like get him over, which is not an easy task for Bartolo Cologne. He has what three sacrifices this year. Maybe yelling down there at Todd Frazier. Uh, 
Todd giving the Reds defensive signs. He trying the old butcher boy right there. Well, he's batting 038, and that doesn't tell the whole story. He's been up 52 times and he has struck out 31. So really what the, the key for the Mets right here. First of all the key for the Reds is throw strikes if you're afraid of Simon but the key for the Mets is to try to get Wilmer Flores at second base a decent lead so that he can steal on a pitch that Bartolo Colon will bunt through or not even bunt at. And all he's got to do to do that is beat Ramon Santiago to the back because Ramon's going to go to the third. Get right up that? the middle. They're going to go to third for the tag, and they've got him over there at third base. That ground ball went right over the bag at second. Here comes Terry Collins out. They're probably going to challenge this. Flores is out 6 5. He'll go right to the third base umpire, Paul Schreiber. How about Bartolo making contact right there? That is exactly the kind of play that you want to advance on. Oh, you know what? That slide by Flores. He's, he slid and stopped and tried to go. It was, it was almost bounced over there to third base. One, two, and then finally gets to the bag. Tim Tuffle thinks he's safe. And they are going to challenge this. So I think he's out. The crew chief, Ted Barrett. Along with Paul Schreiber, the third base umpire. So the call oh, is out, and I think he looked out as well. That's also a very ugly slide. And they will challenge this. Mets hope to, of course, get it overturned. Reds looking for a confirmed, or as a bare minimum, the call stands, meaning there's no evidence to overturn it. It's Ted Barrett you're getting a look at there, the crew chief. He'll get to the bottom of it. It's your guy right there. I'll tell you. Guy looks like an umpire, doesn't he? Looks like a sergeant in the army, like Sergeant Carter, from yeah, former boxer. Mm -hmm. So the Mets are challenging the call out at third on the ground ball headed up the middle by Colon, who did hit, as you said, the ball pretty darn well there. On a six-five put out, here's another look. He's out. Paul Schreiber, third base umpire, right on top of the play here. There's where you're appearing to get the tag. And you can see his foot is not on the base. So we'll wait and see. If he's safe, the Mets will have runners at the corners with nobody out. If he is out, they'll have a runner at first with one out. We've never really been able to figure out if it takes longer. Is that good or bad? If it if depends you're what side better. you're on, I guess. Yeah. It's good for concessionaires. It's taking a while here as the umpires are over there. Ted Barrett, Paul Schreiber. Now they're going to uh, give us the outcome. And they're oh going to call the runner goodness. safe. They're going to overturn that call, meaning they had clear and convincing evidence that the call in the field was incorrect. Frazier can't believe it. Brian Price showed no emotion, but you know he's seething inside. That call is overturned, safe at third. Maybe that tag is, isn't on him. I mean, it appears from that angle that that's the only angle they have. So that'll be a fielder's mm. choice for Cologne. Still a bad slide. And Flores over at third base. So they get what in effect would be the sacrifice and the runner on. Now the Reds are going to give up a run in order to get a double play ball. I 
Now you got a strike out of Lagares the first time up. So this is really what you've got to be going after if you're Alfredo Simon right here. You know, those pitches right there throwing that fastball down the dirt. He didn't do that very much in the first half. And I know that he's still throwing 95 and, and guys are saying well you know it's not tired because his velocity hasn't dropped off but that's not the only sign. Frazier is going to come home. Mazzarocco will put on the tag and they finally do get Wilmer Flores. They didn't get him at third. They thought they did. Then that call was overturned. But they get him here with a bullet strike from Frazier to Mazzarocco. It's a nice play because Frazier realized there was no chance for a double play. Ball hits off the plate. High hop. And you're not going to get two. But Flores gets a late break. And a good play overall. Mazzarocco giving the runner a little bit of the lane of the plate so he can't be called for blocking the plate illegally. So now the Reds have a chance to get out of this inning with no damage. Yeah, that was a great job there by Mezzarocco. He caught the ball outside the baseline, and then once you get it, you can go in, and that's exactly what he did. Now double play back in order if they can get it. That would get him through the inning. Den Decker walked his first time. It's going to take two hits to score Cologne from second. No balls, two strikes. Den Decker was leading the Pacific Coast League in hitting when he was called up this. Most recent time on August the 9th, hitting 334 down there for the Las Vegas team. I guess this was really the spot. He's playing uh, left field, the spot that they had kind of hoped. Chris Young was going to fill for them this year, but boy, that didn't work out at all. No. Chris Young actually now playing on the other end of New York at the, uh, with the Yankees after being released by the Mets. There's strike three call. Now, now Alfredo Simon after that splitter it's the only pitch of that at bat that he threw actually in the strike zone. One out away now from getting out of this inning but it's a big out in David Wright. Right hitting plus 300 on the year with runners in scoring position at 302. Base hit hard hit into right center his first time. He gets another one that way here to Bruce. Cologne will move to third with no intention at all of trying to score. And now the Mets have them loaded. And well, you talked about David Wright hoping he doesn't break out this weekend. He's two for two here in the early part of this game. Well, he's hitting the ball the other way, too. He's kind of taking what the Reds are giving him right now. Really waiting on that ball, hitting it right out of the catcher's mitt. Cologne coming to third base. He does not have his eyes at the plate at all. He's going third, and that is it. Now it's up to Lucas Duda. Their main power guy, their main RBI guy. There he is, career wise, with the bases loaded, and this year, two for 12. But he didn't see a fastball first time up. Nothing but those splitters. And he chased a bunch of them, and now. Alfredo surprises him with a piece of cheese on the outside corner. Boy, 
good job by Mezzarocco. He's he's already feels like he's caught a whole game back there after that first inning where Simon is bouncing so many. First inning out there for Simon, another long inning here in the second. You know, part of the problem with the splitter, it, it could be that it's so hot outside. That ball goes right in between your middle finger and your next finger. And if you're sweating and you've got perspiration pouring down your hand, you know, you've got to get just the right grip on that pitch. And if it slips at all, it's going to go high. If you put too much rosin on it or too much grip on it, you bounce it in the dirt. Well, now he falls behind three and one. Boy. Aaron went he, away from walking in a run. If you're Lucas Duda. Man, you are letting it rip on this pitch right here because you figured you're going to get something hit. That's up 2 1, top of the second. Bases loaded, two out. Now the runners, all of them, Cologne from third. Lagares from second, right from first will be on the move. I mentioned he's the leader on this team in home runs with 26, a career best this year. His numbers have really gone up over the course of the last four years. Runners on the move and ball four. Simon walks Duda forcing in a run his 78th RBI and it is 3 1 in favor of the Mets. Jeff Pico already to the mound now for the second time in two innings. Well Brian Price has had to sit and watch some awful ugly baseball here. Not only on this last road trip where the Reds went one and five but really since the All Star break. The offense has disappeared the normally very consistent starting pitching has been sketchy at times like last night. Bullpen has not been there the way it had been in the beginning of the year. Hey, while we have a second we have to take a look at the. Uh, the review process so far the numbers are in. OK. And we've already had one call overturned tonight. And here's what we're talking about. I mean it's amazing to think that there have been over a thousand challenges in baseball. And 47 percent of those have been overturned. Force plays being the most overturned ones. Tag plays only at 42 percent. That'll go up a little bit tonight. I think that's an amazing high number. It absolutely is. I wonder what the umpires think about that. Take another look at it because it is worth taking a look at. This is through the end of August. Tag plays. A lot of those are at second base on stolen bases. Force plays, of course, most of those are at first bases. We've had home runs before, so those are the least overturned. The traps, though, at 81 percent, that's that's interesting. But you know what that says to me is how difficult it is for an umpire on the run to try to determine an outfielder, because that's normally when the trap is made, whether he traps the ball or whether he bounces it. Well, the key is what you just said, though. On the run, they're trying to look at that as they're bouncing up and down a little bit. Well, they're trying bit. to get close to it, though. Mm -hmm. It's hard to hard to call from 120 feet away. Correct. So you're trying to get close to it, and you know he may not have a good angle on it, but that is a very difficult play to try to get right. That trap call, obviously, with the number of overturns. So you may say that the, the replay system is working. Because if you're, if you're overturning 40% of the call, 47% of the calls overall, and over 80% of the trap plays, then you're getting the calls right. Broken bat by Darno. The Reds will get the force out at second base on Duda, putting an end. 
to the top of the second. But the Reds had a, uh, the Mets had a run, and now our three-one leader in the middle of the second. You had the chance to purchase seats in a special section that is not normally available. The scout seats, the premium seats right behind home plate can be purchased for any game against St. Louis this coming Monday through Thursday for just $60. Go to Reds.com slash FSOhio and use the code 14FSOH. That's 14FSOH to get your discounted seats right now. Hi, I'm Jim Day, and in fact, I am in the scout section. And uh, notice that these seats are wider, they're padded. You've got in-seat service, meaning they'll come around and take your concession orders. Uh, the scout seats are some of the most popular seats in this ballpark. Plus, you have access to Scouts Alley. That's a air-conditioned, controlled concession area. That's a private area just for these scout seat holders. So there's a lot of reasons to treat yourself coming up Monday against the Cardinals. Hello, people. How we doing? How we doing, Jim Kelch, Chris Welch? Are any scouts there tonight? There are. They're actually a, a section over, and they've got, uh, you know, all the uh, the doings that they're normally used to having, their scout sheets, their books. I would say there's about 10, to, 10 of them here. Rumor has it, Jim Day, that you have asked to do all of your in-game hits from the scout seat area. I have because, as I said, they come around and take your order. And uh, two or three times they've asked me if I wanted a beer. And I said, I'm I'm working. Cannot have a beverage of that type, but I would like a soft drink if they could bring me one. You're a diner type guy, but you can't order breakfast from that seat, buddy. I am a diner guy, just like you. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, sir. On the road, that's mine. That's my brunch partner up there, Chris Welsh. <laughs> he better believe it. How good to see Brandon Phillips get a base hit. He had been over his last 20. He gets the, uh, I guess you'd call that a Texas leaguer out in the right center, wouldn't you? Hey, I got it written down as a line drive right there. Third hit of the game for the Reds. That brings the tying run now to the plate. And Brian Pena, another one that's struggling mightily here as of late. He Comes into the game at 252 with five homers. He's driven in 25. He went one for 12 on the recent road trip, three for his last 34. Phillips held over there at first by Duda. That one's going to make the hole and into right. Brandon will turn the corner. That's the arm of the right fielder, Granderson, in there ahead of the throw with a head first slide. Reds have them at the corners with nobody out. You don't have to hit them hard. You just have to hit them where they're not. 
Brandon Phillips really pouring it on right there. That ball, you know, one of the indications for a base runner is to whether you're going to stretch it from first to third or not or score from second to home is how soon the ball hits the dirt. And if it's a ground ball that goes through the infield, almost always you're going to try to get the third base. If it's a line drive, one hopper to the right fielder, oftentimes that tells you without even picking up the base coach, that tells you to stay. So Brandon does a good job right there, and the Reds have him on the corners. Now Jason Bourgeois, whom we talked about in the open, came into the game on Wednesday night. Had a base hit in the eighth inning, and then last night started out in center field, went two for five, scored a couple of times. You talked about him. He's not a rookie. The guy's been around a while. Always been a pretty good hitter. Off the mound, the, the pitcher's glove, Bartolo Colon, tried to flip it on over to Duda with his glove. That didn't work. Run will score. It's a one run game again at three to two in favor of the Mets. Bourgeois is aboard again. Or he's having a good little run of it. Jason Bourgeois is no gold glove this year for Bartolo Colon. And that's a double play ball had he uh, fielded that thing cleanly. Or at least an opportunity at it. Going to be an error on the pitcher Cologne. Runners at first and second, nobody out. Now the Reds have the tying run in scoring position. Go ahead run and the person of Bourgeois over at first. Here, Santiago against Cologne. 423 average. You add up all the other at bats of the Reds in the lineup tonight, they don't equal 26. Of course, Cologne, a longtime American leaguer. Santiago, the same way. Play on Bourgeois and air on the pitcher Cologne. No RBI. Phillips scores. Pena at second base. Reds down a run now 3 2. Lined in the right field, unfortunately, right at Granderson. And he makes the catch for out number one. Granderson out in right field as we take a look at the rest of the Mets defensive alignment brought to you by your four dealers. Den Decker, Lagaris, and Granderson the outfield. Right Flores, Herrera, and Duda make up the infield. Cologne pitches to Travis Darno. Matter now will be Simon, but before Cologne pitches to him, a little meeting there between Wright, the third baseman, Flores, the shortstop, and Cologne. Billy Hamilton waits on deck for the Reds, and uh, I guess we've talked a lot about the fact that we think, and a lot of people think, Hamilton should be the rookie of the year in the National League. If there is a main challenger, it's on this Mets club out of their uh, starting rotation. Jacob DeGrom. Yep, DeGrom. On the year he is seven and six but with a two point eight seven ERA 19 starts 14 quality starts. 112 strikeouts 119 in the third innings. Reds will not see him this weekend this series can 
continues tomorrow afternoon with Johnny Cueto gunning for his 17th win against Dylan G. And then the wrap up on uh, Sunday will be Matt Latos against Zach Wheeler. So no chance to see the main competition for Hamilton and Rookie of the Year in Jacob DeGrom this weekend. One veteran to another here, Cologne 41, Simon 33. Cologne is a 200 plus game winner in his career 201 wins, 139 losses. Gets by the first baseman. Cologne will throw to the second baseman, Herrera covering, so credit Simon with a sacrifice. It goes 1 4. And moves the runners along. Here's now the comparison between top rookie of the year candidates DeGrom on the right, Hamilton on the left. The only number really on DeGrom's ledger that is not eye popping being a rookie is the seven wins. But you know, if Hamilton gets it, I could see people arguing and saying, well, DeGrom did a great job, same way the other way. Well, you're right. And it's it's not, I don't think, the same as it is when you have an MVP and a Cy Young Award winner. I mean, you can be the rookie pitcher of the year, but there's not as much status with that as there is being the rookie of the year. Right. So when you have an award for a player like a MVP and a separate one for a pitcher like a Cy Young Award. Right. They maybe ought to do that same thing when it comes to rookie status as well. That way you wouldn't have the kind of controversy that may brew if the groom goes down the line here in his last what three or four starts and, and goes lights out and does not win it. People will wonder why. There he is. A little bit of that Jeff Samarja going right there for that hair. He's been pitching like Samarja. Yeah. Billy get on a little bit of a run offensively and get that average back up over 270. I think he could probably win the award. He's been down a little bit lately as well. I just wonder how much credit that he will get for his defense. Because that's the other part of the story when you compare the Mets and the Reds. So you've got two center fielders here that are vying, really, in my opinion, for the Gold Glove Award yeah. in center field this you're, year. You're right. Or they should be in the conversation anyway. Right picks that on the grass and will throw out Billy Hamilton putting an end to the bottom of the second Reds get a run one run game through two. Challenge app, you and your opponent each select four different players, and the person with the most points at the end of each game wins. 
Head to head challenge is free to play, so download today. Two innings here at Great American Ballpark complete. Reds down a run 3 2. We've had four half innings of baseball, scoring in each of them. Granderson leads it off here against Simon in the third, who comes into this inning. 62 pitches in two innings. Granderson, Herrera, and Flores. Six, seven, eight. Terry Collins line up here tonight. Each of these clubs playing in their 141st game of the year. Got him on strikes. Number four for Alfredo Simon. Let's check in with Jim Day who has some uh, updated information and I assume Jim you have not moved from the scout seat area. I have definitely not moved because these seats are tremendous. Let's update you on Homer Bailey this morning. Reds medical director Dr. Timothy Krimchek performed surgery to repair a tendon in his forearm of his pitching arm and it all went well they said and by the way they once they got in there they were glad that they went ahead with the surgery and didn't try the normal rehab procedures. Same injury as Jonathan Broxson but not a complete tear a partial tear of that tendon so the recovery time they hope if all goes well will be sooner. Dr. Krimchak says that by mid December or late December Homer Bailey can begin a throwing program and if that happens he should be in line to be ready for spring training and that is good news. Yeah it really is and uh, now it's the same type of injury and he mentioned uh, Jonathan Broxton but didn't Matt Latos this spring have a little strain in his flexor mass which ended up being nothing. He did indeed and that's the difference in the injury that uh, the severity of injuries that uh, he just sprained it and was able to come back from it Broxton completely tore it and uh, last August and then didn't make his first start till a little bit into the season in April. So Homer's kind of in the middle of that. It's always good also when they get in there and they don't find anything worse than they thought they were going to see uh, when they got ready to go in. No question. They all said uh, all's good. Homer came through it well and uh, they are happy with the procedure. Thank you Jim. Well that is good news because you know normally when you say elbow surgery you're thinking Tommy John surgery and that is a year at least. And uh, you know no one will work any harder than Homer Bailey to get back on the field. Well, credit Herrera with a single then a throwing error by the usually very accurate Todd Frazier single E5 puts Dilson Herrera out at second base. That number of pitches you see at the very top of that little Fox box we have there 70 that is correct. We're in the top of the third inning. That error by Frazier, by the way, ends an eight game errorless streak by the Reds, who do enter tonight, where they have been most of the year as the best defensive team in the big leagues and having committed the fewest errors in Major League Baseball this year. Frazier cuts this one off and another hop throw to first. Pena stays on the bag and makes the play. Frazier ends up in shallow right field when all said and done. He had to field the ball and avoid the bat here. Well he throws kind of an awkward throw not for Frazier but I mean because he was running toward second base you almost have to throw behind yourself right there. That's a very athletic play. Good pick by Pena put himself in a good position. A little collision down there at first base it looked like. We we're talking about Pena and the fact that he has really not been hitting much as of late but I'm telling you what you could not ask any more of a guy who is a catcher who had never made a start at first base than what he has done for this team over there this year. There's a throw out of Cologne to end the top of the third. Hit an error and a man left for the Mets.
Hashtag Ohio fan photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game. That is our AT&T call to action brought to you by AT&T and our fan photo of the game. How about our IGS bringing the energy feature for tonight? Let's talk about the wily veteran right-hander Bartolo Colon. Here are his ranks among active pitchers in the big leagues. Mentioned the 201 wins, 35 complete games, second among active pitchers. Innings, strikeouts right near the top. Those wins, the active winningest pitcher is Tim Hudson. Of the Giants with 214, CC Sabathia at 208, then Cologne at 201. He's seen third on the strikeout list. Sabathia is one. AJ Burnett is two. Cologne is three. The you know, starts, he's 431. Gives you a real good snapshot of how durable over the years that Cologne has been. But he had a, he had a procedure back in 2011 that was. Not only cutting edge, but there was a question as to whether it was ethical, whether it was uh, allowable or not. It was performed in the Dominican Republic, not because it was illegal in the United States, but it was he had stem cell operation on his shoulder. Now, after he won the Cy Young Award in 2005, the next four seasons he really struggled. In fact, he only made 48 appearances with three different teams. An elbow injury sidelined him the end of 2009. He did not play at all in 2010. They met with a doctor that was going to help them. So they arranged to go down the Dominican Republic and have a stem cell operation on his shoulder. And they brought in American doctors. They had an anesthesiologist there, an orthopedic surgeon, a general surgeon, a cardiac specialist, and the doctor that was going to perform the stem cell operation. They sit by Frazier. He's two for two. So after having essentially three years of not being able to pitch at all, he came back after that and pitched in the winter ball for Tony Pena, who was the bench coach for the New York Yankees. And at that time, the Yankees signed him to a contract, I mean, a $900,000 contract, which for the Yankees at that time was a bargain. And he came back that next year throwing 95 or 96 miles an hour. I mean, it was essentially a medical miracle. I don't believe that is anywhere near the same type of procedure that they're doing now the PRP mm -hmm. that we've talked about Joey Votto's received and, and uh, Homer Homer Bailey Bailey received. as well and some other athletes. But when that PRP was first developed you know that was it was developed by uh, the do doctor uh, Galea a Canadian doctor who was brought up for charges in 2007 for doing it for. Alex Rodriguez, Tiger Woods, Jose Reyes, Olympic swimmer. So now you see that the progression and the evolution of medicine and how it is you're almost on a collision course with, you know, at what point are you going to be able to do this and at what point are you not going to be? So, but I think as far as I know, the only player in baseball to have been involved in stem cell operation has been Bartolo Colon. You mentioned that Major League Baseball investigated it, and I guess they were looking at the possibility of uh, human growth hormone, right? Correct. Yeah, there, there have been doctors that abuse that along with the PRP because the human growth hormone, if you're not an athlete, you're allowed, to, you're allowed to take it, and it does actually help in the recovery. But it's illegal to take if you're in Major League Baseball or in any sport for that matter. So, all above my certainly education level, but. Interesting to read about. Well, you can't argue uh, with the success that he has had in the innings that he's put in since having that procedure done, particularly last year when he was an 18 game winner with the A's. Well, he obviously would not be pitching right now had he not had it done. He made a start as an Oakland A here last year, giving up five runs in two and two thirds innings to the Reds in that game. Really one of the few bad starts he had a year ago when he ended up 18 and 6 with a 2.65 ERA. He was an all star, finished sixth in uh, Cy Young voting last year. There's the comparison of what he did 
his first three times out against the Reds versus that last time out here last year. And Decker makes the play as a Rocco retired. Here's Jay Bruce. Bruce in that game last year against the A's and Cologne did have a two run homer. Part of a three run inning. That in effect knocked Cologne out of that game. He did not get through the third. Hard hit ball played by Duda his first time and beat Jay to the bag. Hit by Frazier. Mets, like most teams, shift Bruce. Right way off the bag at third. Shortstop cheating up the middle. That's Flores. There's Herrera two steps in on the dirt. Iris put Neil Walker about six steps. In a shallow right, although not with a runner on board. Then Decker has a beat on this ball. We're out number two. Remember, Reds fans, if a Reds home run hits the Toyota sign during tonight's game, Michelle Fraley from Fairborn, Ohio, will win the beautiful Tundra that's on display. Here at Great American Ballpark, register for your chance to win at an upcoming game by visiting your Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky Toyota dealers. There's the Toyota resting high above the Reds bullpen out in left center as it is throughout the year. Phillips bats with two out. Base hit into right his first time, snapped a season worse over 20. There's Frazier stepping off. Cologne does the same, and they throw Todd out at second base. That has worked. On a number of occasions this year for Frazier, kind of the sneak attack, but it does not work here. And Fox Sports 1. It all kicks off with 20th ranked Kansas State taking on Iowa State. Then on Fox, it's the game everyone is talking about. 
Eighth ranked Michigan State battling number three Oregon in an epic early season matchup. Also BYU takes on Texas and Texas Tech faces UTEP in the evening. That one will be seen on Fox Sports 1. It's all starting tomorrow at noon Eastern and can also be found streaming live on Fox Sports Go. 3-2 match through three. Juan Lagares leads things off here in the top of the fourth. He struck out, hit into a force play, is 0 for 2. Lagares, 25 years old, signed by the Mets eight years ago, 2006, as a free agent. Didn't make it to the big leagues finally until last year. Last year he had 242. This year, 284 coming into today's game. More RBIs this year, more hits this year. A few more stolen bases. It just goes to show you when you sign a young man, especially out of a one of the Latin American countries, Colombia, Venezuela, Dominican Republic, Mexico. Not subject to the draft. Sometimes you're getting when they're 16 years old, you have to be ultra patient. And they may spend two or two years in the Dominican Summer League, for instance, where you have a program you may never even hear of them. Reds have two teams down in their Dominican program. About 60 players overall. They go from ages of 16 years old to 18. Every team has something similar to that. If they don't have a couple of ball clubs, they have at least one. That's going to get by Santiago and on into center. There's a hit for Lagares. That gives him a five game hitting streak and a hit now in 11 of his last 13 for a lot of pitches down the stretch tonight for Alfredo Simon. He is right now thrown exactly the same number of pitches. In three innings plus a batter then he pitched in seven innings. Against New York where he. Ended up with a win in that ball game back early in the year when the Reds went to City Field. You got to believe that a he was. Pumping strikes in there and B, the Mets were up there hacking early. Then Decker scored a run in the first via a walk. Called out on strikes in the second. That's here in the fourth. He's a young man from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Went to Westminster High School, then ended up playing for the University of Florida Gators in the SEC. Drafted in the fifth round of 2010. And he's had some. I guess he's had a lot of playing time this year. I had a pretty good look at him. And you wonder as a Mets, this is a rebuilding year for the Mets. They've got a little bit more money to spend, I think, next year. So you wonder if that left field spot is one where they may end up trying to bring in a little more thump than what Van Decker's been able to, to provide for them so far. I remember being in New York early in the year in April when the Reds played out there. You and I did television together, and the uh, talk out of the Mets front office is we think we can make the postseason this year. But those hopes went down the uh, the two pretty quickly. Matt Harvey was not going to be there this year. Bobby Parnell from the uh, bullpen was not going to be there this year, and it's never really worked out for them. Well, you're right, and when you have those kind of injuries, of course. But when you're looking toward next year with the the Mets, they really have about seven or eight. Pitchers, starting pitchers for five jobs. So they have got a rare problem of being too pitching rich, at least to start out. Matt Harvey, DL all year long with a Tommy John surgery. He'll be ready next year. They certainly like the young men we'll see Sunday in Wheeler. Zach Wheeler. Of course, they got DeGrom, Dylan G, who we'll see tomorrow. Jonathan Nice. Yeah. Noah Sindergaard. And they got a young man down in Triple A, probably be in Triple A next year, Stephen Matz. They are very high on. I think this is a 
a top of the rotation type pitcher when he finally gets here and if he fulfills his potential. That's a foul ball hit hard by Den Decker. Mezzarocco will jog to the mound to talk with Simon, who's at 84, 84 pitches, and he works here in the top of the fourth. The most popular way to follow the September pennant races is with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Enjoy live look ins, replay reviews, scores, live radio broadcasts, the MLB.tv game of the day, and much more. Get at bat for your smartphone or tablet on the App Store or visit MLB.com. Off hit by Lagares and a 2 2 count now to Den Decker. Third base side of the mound. Simon's going to have to hurry and he does and gets Den Decker barely at first base. Well, he took one extra look at second base. Perhaps he was going to think about getting the lead runner Lagares going into second. Um, he just got rid of it in time. Watch him look at second base first. It's not the pitcher running. Yeah, he took that extra second and it almost cost him. So it has the effect of a sacrifice, and now it's David Wright. Two ABs, two hits tonight for Wright. Two plate appearances for right, two base hits, both the right field. Action in the Reds bullpen. That's the young man we saw the other night. Pitch pretty well. Ryan Denick making his big league debut in Baltimore. What you won't see down the stretch in these games are teams running out of players. I mean, the Reds have 11 pitchers in their bullpen. The Mets come into this game with nine. And during the course of the year, you usually have seven in your bullpen. Right. Reds called up 10. They have 35 players on the active roster. Mets called up five, so they have 30. Well, she saw all the uh, the everyday players in the lineup for the Reds last night. Bourgeois had a couple of hits. Lutz had a hit in an RBI. Norman Rodriguez made his big league debut and 0 for three. Elmore made his Reds debut on one for four. Barnhart been up and down a couple of times, had a hit last night. Only Bourgeois in the lineup tonight. Well, Alfredo Simon had an idea and he wanted to run it by David Mazzarocco before he threw it. And it was evidently a high fork ball or splitter. And he freezes David Wright and disposes of the Mets third baseman there with a runner in scoring position. Good job there. Now the walk. Lucas Duda intentionally get the right handed hitting Darno, the catcher, with two on and two out. See, this is the situation that I always talk about when people ask me about speeding up the game. I would say if you're going to walk a guy intentionally, simply tell him, hey, we're putting you on and have him jog on down to first and move on. Well, they do that, at, I think, at high school level. And I don't think you need to do that here because. You don't see that many. 
you want to speed the game up there are a lot of other ways to do it. I mean you may see one intentional walk a game. It all adds up. Well, for instance, Alfredo Simon this year. He has started 28 ball games now. He has intentionally walked seven. I mean, that is out of the 2,500 plus pitches that he has thrown. So that's not the delay of the game. It's getting guys in the batter's box, keeping them in the batter's box, getting them off the on deck circle. And not making them wait around for the second stands of their walk up so walk up music. There's a rip by Darno to left field. The intentional walk backfires on the Reds. Three run homer by the Mets catcher is 13th. And it is now 6 2 in favor of New York. Fed fastballs the first time up, and he eventually got a base hit on it. That, I couldn't tell what the speed of that pitch was. I looked down for a moment. Next time you look up, the ball's diving into the seats. It looked like it was an off speed pitch. Don't know whether it's a splitter or a curveball. 75 miles an hour, I'm being told from the truck, and that would be a curveball. So. Not the same guy, no doubt about it. After back to back starts in which he had been fairly impressive, Pena will step on the bag here against Atlanta. Last time out against Pittsburgh. Tonight, not the night for Alfredo Simon. No, the Reds have their work cut out for them if they are to win this, the 141st game of the year. Bartolo Colon, meanwhile, has allowed two runs on five hits. Well, as Brandon Phillips steps into the batter's box, it's always interesting to trace the lineage of players as to how they get to certain places. And if it wasn't for Bartolo Colon, the Reds may not have Brandon Phillips. You got to go back to July the 27th of 2002. Cologne goes from the Cleveland Indians to the Expos with Tim Drew, and the Indians receive in return Brandon Phillips, Grady Sizemore, Cliff Lee, and Lee Stevens, all in one deal. Now that's remarkable enough. But when you think that at the time, the Montreal Expos were trying to get Cologne because they thought they were one pitcher away, getting back into the things. In the pennant race, mm -hmm. July 27th, right? Well, they were already a little bit out of the pennant race. 
They were two games under 500. They were 16 games out of first place when Omar Minaya pulled the trigger on that trade. And they ended up 19 games back of the Atlanta Braves, who ended up winning 101 games that year. So that was a giveaway, essentially, in exchange for Cologne. Now, Cologne did his job at the end of the year for the Expos. He won 10 games. He lost four. And he was traded the next year. I want to say the Oakland A's, but White Sox. To the White Sox. That was really the string, a uh, 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 start of a string of three pretty darn good years for him. Oh, you're right, because it culminated when he won the Cy Young Award in 2005. 21 game winner that year. Yeah, really, when you look at the, the players that were involved in that deal, most of them have gone on to stellar careers. Cologne, Phillips, Lee, Sizemore. All of that group that we mentioned still at it. Well, you've got to be a really good player to play that long because that's 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. Pena base hit his first time. Reds have been out hit 8 5, outscored 6 2. Toward the middle. And another hit for Brian Pena. So a multi hit game for Brian. He had only three hits in his last 34 at bats coming into this game. Nice to see him have a multi hit game here tonight. Well, he hit one by the second baseman the first time. Herrera, who dove for it towards first base just beyond his glove. That time he dives again just beyond his glove. Herrera's been diving all over the place. He's not come up with anything yet. Reds have placed them perfectly. So here's Bourgeois. He hit that ball back to the mound. Off the glove of Cologne his first time. End result was an E1. Chance here for Lagaris. Two out. That'll be a chance for Ramon Santiago. Runner on one out. Uh, pardon me. Runner on two out. The Reds down by four. the fact that these two teams got together they were the first road games of the year for the Reds after starting the season at home against the Cardinals went to New York to take on the Mets April 4th 5th and 6th lost in that Friday night 4 to 3 a very cold night Lucas Duda had a pair of home runs in that game lost on Saturday afternoon 6 3 when Ike Davis had that grand slam in the bottom of the ninth inning against J.J. Hoover. And the only win of the three game series came with Simon on the mound against Jonathan Neese. And a 2 1 Reds win. Now they see them here in September. Donald Lutz on deck to bat for Simon. And Ryan Denick was up throwing earlier in the Reds bullpen. And now three and one. There is ball four. 
four. So Santiago joins Pena on the bases. Gives Lux a chance to bat with two on and two out. Dan more than the longtime pitching coach of the Mets will jog on out to the mound. Final line on Simon four innings. Eight hits six runs all earned. He walked three strikes out five. Simon's ERA goes from 328 to 352. This is a guy at the All Star break that had an ERA of 270. 96 pitches for Simon in the game. When this season comes to an end, they're going to see the final numbers that he puts up and not be aware, for the most part, for the great first half he had. Well, you're right because he did have a terrific first half. He saved his ball club. I mean, he yeah. was at one time the ace of this team. The way he was dealing out there, I mean, it was just one after another start for Alfredo Simon where he just dominated. But I mean, I don't know how anybody could ever think that he would be able to duplicate in the second half what he did in the first half because it was so improbable and he dominated so much, it, it just doesn't happen. So you had to figure he was going to take a step back, and that he has. Started in the game last night out in left field against Baltimore. Was one for four at an RBI single as part of that four run seventh inning. And he was the first batter to face the Orioles' third pitcher, Tommy Hunter. J.J. Hoover now up and throwing in the Reds' bullpen. Figures to be the new man on the mound come the fifth. Lubs up and down a couple of times this year with a big league club. Hitting 216 with one run batted in. That came last night. seen a string of pitchers here that the three guys that the Reds saw in Baltimore and Bartolo Colon tonight it seemed like all of these pitchers are throwing a lot of four seam fastballs but they specialize in throwing them up in the zone and nobody was up there throwing I mean Bud Norris was throwing the hardest of any of them about 94 but here Colon is throwing fastball by guys all night long at 89. Well, it worked for Norris Tuesday night. It certainly worked for Miguel Gonzalez on Wednesday night. The phone's getting loose now. That last one was at 92. The stem cells kicking in. Chris Tillman last night, three runs and six. So three straight quality starts against the Reds from Baltimore. Alone some ways away from that as he works here in the fourth tonight, having already given up two runs. Now what Donald Lutz would really like is that same fastball about two inches above the knee. Or you just drop that bat head. But to hit the high one, you gotta hit it out in front of the play a little bit more. He like a lot of left-handed hitters is he's geared to hit that one down. He had a dozen home runs this year in the minor leagues, split evenly between double A Pensacola, Triple A Louisville. He can hit him a long way. He's a strikeout victim here. Only the second by Bartolo Colon. But it puts an end to the bottom of the fourth.
chance to purchase seats in a special section that is not normally available. It's the Scout Seats. Premium seats right behind home plate. Can be purchased for any game against the Cardinales. Big series coming up Monday through Thursday for just $60. Go to Reds.com slash FSOhio and use the code 14FSOH to get your discounted seats right now. And I can tell you firsthand, if uh, you have the means, treat yourself. Not only the Cardinal Series, but these seats are terrific. I'm Jim Day, and everyone from Fox Sports Ohio would like to send out a big old happy birthday to one of our colleagues, the Cowboy, Jeff Brantley. Happy birthday today in the radio booth tonight with Marty Brenneman, celebrating number 39 again. Jim Kelch. How about that? The Cowboys celebrating a birthday today, decked out in green for Irish Heritage Night. He was thinking ahead on that. You know, not only the Cowboys' birthday, but also a very special birthday for someone very special in my life. All right. My daughter Grace is oh. 14 today, so she shares a, a birthday with the Cowboy. And happy birthday. Wish Grace is now eighth grader. Have a wonderful birthday and a wonderful year. As you are now, you're legitimate for you know when you're a 13, you're a teenager, but when you're 14, that's when it, it's a legit. I'll take your word for that. Well, you've had a few go through the house. Yes, I have. So happy birthday, Grace. I love you, and I would sing you happy birthday on the air, but I've been told our legal department would not like that because we're not allowed to sing anymore. Tom Brenneman ruined it for everyone by missing just about every note he tried to hit. I don't know that our ears could stand it anyway. Oh, you're right about that. Good start for J.J. Hoover. A strike out of Dilson Herrera here in the fifth inning. Floor has doubled and grounded out. Now it's a high fly ball that's going to carry out of the ballpark. That is a second deck shot for Wilmer Floor as his third home run of the year and makes it seven to two New York, their second home run of the night. Both no doubters. First by Darno, now by Flores. When you get it on a sweet part of the bat, you don't have to swing hard. Getting it from his teammates in the uh, dugout, rather, uh, floor is off the home run offered up by JJ. That's been a real issue for him this year. That's the 11th home run Hoover's given up mm. out of the bullpen. That was the towel gauntlet. Mm -hmm. Now JJ falls behind Cologne three and one. Might have been worried about that one. Second appearance for JJ since coming back from Louisville when rosters expanded. Pena. Has room, makes the play. Two out.
Top of the order now and Juan Lagares. Uber appeared Wednesday night in the six nothing Baltimore win against the Orioles there two thirds of an inning. Based two batters Marquecas was the first he retired them both. Now comes on here. It was 48 appearance of the year. And a tough 2014 for JJ. Well, overall, I think the body work when you look at it, it is. But I mean, if you're JJ Hoover, you're thinking, hey, I, I want to get out there every chance I can. I want to turn things around. I feel like I'm I'm going to get better here. You don't want to end the season on a bad note, even if you've had a first couple of months being bad. He was so good last year for the Reds, so good. Just not. Uh, just because it just goes to show you though just because you have one good year doesn't mean you could rubber stamp your way to a to a great career it takes a lot of work a little bit of luck preparation well by his own admission he says I have not been able to command the strike zone this year like I have in years past but he's got to figure out why because he's probably the only one who's going to be able to correct it now he'll get plenty of advice from Jeff Pico and Brian Price, Mac Jenkins. But he's the one that's got to figure out really what to do and do it. Frazier. Innings over. But a home run by Wilma Flores adds to the Mets lead. Now seven to two in the middle of the fifth. This season, the Kroger Meal Deal. Check concession stands throughout the ballpark for the Kroger Meal Deal, which includes a hot dog, a bag of chips, 16 ounce Coke, and during this homestand, feed your wild side with Jack Link's beef jerky. Make sure you get your Kroger Meal Deal today. Wilmer Flores home run, number three for him, has made it a five run lead. For the New Yorkers at 7 to 2, they've about hit the Reds 9 6. Billy Hamilton steps in to lead it off against Cologne. He's 0 for 2 tonight. The bunt, bare hand pick, but no throw. Base hit Billy Hamilton. Well, when you do it against David Wright, you're doing it about one of the best in the business right there. And that was a perfectly placed bunt. Looked like it even had a little backspan, so that when Wright got it, he knew. Got a little internal clock ticking in his head and realizing it goes a lot quicker with Billy Hamilton going down the line.
ripped the third right had it then dropped it and will get his man at first base Todd Frazier he doesn't bobble that ball that's a double play. Boy, hit it very sharply. In fact, Hoover's, hit, I mean, Frazier has hit it hard twice now. Mazzarocco got under it down the left field side then Decker has it two out Flores the shortstop was charging out there as was right then Decker handles it Mazzarocco three times has hit the ball to left field two men out here's Bruce Jay made that first game Tuesday night in Baltimore interesting with his grand slam in the eighth inning the third of his career. Ingham against uh, Darren O'Day from 5 0 to 5 4 with that grand slam. Hamilton leads away at second base. He, of course, in the Baltimore series, set the new rookie record for stolen bases. He stole his 55th on Tuesday night, surpassing the total of Bob Besher that had stood since 1909. Trying to become only the fifth player in Reds history to steal 60 bases in a season. Joining the likes of Besher, who has the single season record at 81, set back in 1911. Eric Davis, Dave Collins, Joe Morgan did it three times. Jay gets under it. Lagaris will handle it to retire the side. So a leadoff bunt single by Hamilton goes for naught. And we're through five here in Cincinnati.
food group. Let's create great dishes together. By Toyota. For over 30 Toyota offers, visit buyatoyota.com. And go for the save on Wing Tuesdays at B-Dubbed with specially priced wings all day. Buffalo Wild Wings, Wings Beer Sports. Take a look at news and notes around Major League Baseball. Two big doings today. Top of the screen, the Texas Rangers. Juan Washington resigns as the manager of the Rangers. Off the field, personal matters for Ron Washington. And then uh, Kevin Towers out as general manager of the Arizona Diamondbacks. And that immediately leads to speculation, I would think, amongst uh, many fans about Walt Jockety due to his relationship with Tony La Russa. Well, it does, but if you read further somewhere along the line, you'll find out that Tony La Russa has already made a statement about that, yeah. saying that Walt Jockety is totally dedicated to what's going on in Cincinnati. He's got loyalty to Bob Castellini and the Reds, and that he is not part of what they're doing out in Arizona. And Walt Jockety is very confident of being able to Spend the next few years here trying to win, win the Reds a championship. And I think he's in the process right now of working on an extension with Mr. Castellini. Meanwhile, Ryan Dennick, left hander, made his major league debut the other night in Baltimore. Looked very impressive at a 1 2 3 inning. And a nice job of getting off the mound. And how about that athletic play? The throw that out. Form dirty. Matt Dendecker. Moves pretty good, he does. Sure does. Very nice. Denick is 27. The Reds picked him up a year ago in the Triple A version of the Rule 5 draft. Which means he was picked up off the Double A roster from the Kansas City Royals. They had to keep him on the Triple A roster all year. So it works the same way. Mm -hmm. 22nd round draft pick in 2009. He came out of Tennessee Tech, but he was raised in North Olmsted, Ohio. That's up around Cleveland. Also went to Marietta College for a little while. And he told me when I talked to him uh, in Baltimore, he likes to keep it simple. In fact, he and Jumbo Diaz were the lefty righty duo out of the bullpen for Jim Riggleman down in Louisville. And he throws fastball slider, occasional change up, likes to pitch inside to righties. Hit hard into right center field. That's going to be. Another hit, the third of the night for David Wright. But how about that job by Bruce to cut that ball off, get it back in, and hold right to a long single? Very impressive. Well, they're trying to get in on him, and this is the second time. Look at the exasperated look of Mezzarocco kind of hanging his head after he sees that ball coming and realizes what Wright's going to do to it. Right hit this second base hit off of Alfredo Simon, a ball that he wanted inside, floated out over the plate, takes it the other way. That's what good hitters do, though. They take advantage of mistakes. So one on, one out for Lucas Duda. Mets now have at least one hit in every inning of this game. And these two teams have really labored offensively this year. Reds come into this game 13th in the National League in batting average. The Mets 14. Both of them have had trying second halves, although the Mets only three games under 500 since the break at 21 and 24. Unfortunately for Cincinnati, along with the Texas Rangers, 15 and 30 since the break, tied for the worst record in the big league since that time. Now yeah, the Reds are the Mets are trying to win three in a row for the first time since early in July. Who's going to catch this ball? Frazier will handle it. Two out. Remember, after every Reds game, Fox Sports Ohio will break it down for you. The first words out of the manager, Brian Price. That's Reds Live post game brought to you by Performance Kings Honda.
Travis Darno, the big blow of this game in the fourth inning, the three run homer. Broke it open from 3 2 to 6 2. Bats with a runner on and two men out. Go back for a minute to that Texas Rangers situation with regard to Ron Washington because I think there's a good point to be made. You may remember a couple of years ago, more than a couple of years ago now, three or four years ago, that he had been, uh, he had tested positive for drugs. For cocaine. For cocaine, yeah. And uh, John Daniels, the general manager of the Rangers today, came out with a statement and said, the personal matter that Ron Washington is, is uh, resigning for is not drug related. I'm sure that everyone, that would sure. naturally come to their mind. John Daniels said not drug related. So whatever the problem may be, we wish we wish Ron Washington uh, a quick resolution to the problem that he is having. Yeah, we certainly do. Good guy. I, in fact, he was a teammate of mine in the minor leagues. In Indianapolis? No, not in. You know, I think it was in winter ball. Now I come to think about it. In the center by Darno. You got it. Light it, was, it was in Texas. Okay. Darno three hits tonight. Right three hits tonight. Boy, eleven hits. Yeah. Only in the the sixth inning. Mets have not gone down in order in this game. They've had four batters as a minimum twice. Once in the third. Once in the fifth. Granderson and RBI double earlier. Starter Alfredo Simon out after four innings in this game, allowed six runs, eight hits. J.J. Hoover gave up a home run ball to Wilmer Flores in the fifth, and his one inning were the work. Now it's Ryan Denick. Afternoon game here tomorrow. It'll start at 4:10. Reds live will get things going at 3:30. Johnny Cueto in search of his 17th win. Will go against right hander Dylan G. A couple of opening day starters going at it. Wait till the opening day starter here for the Reds against the Cardinals. Oh boy, there's a blast in the right field off the bat of Granderson. Bruce will watch this one go about a third of the way up the moon deck out in right. Home run for Granderson, number 17. He came into this game 0 for his last 18. He's two for four tonight with four RBIs, and it is now 10 to 2, New York. Said it earlier that just because a guy is having a bad year doesn't mean he's not capable. You throw one right down Broadway, and that's where Ryan Denick put that one. Granderson loses it. So each of the three Reds pitchers have been touched up for a home run ball tonight. This is not a big home run hitting team. They came into this game 12th in the National League out of 15 teams and homers with 106, but they've gotten three of them tonight. Including two three run homers. Nice 
Back end stop by Santiago and a long throw, but not in time. And Herrera legs it out. Ryan Price out of the dugout. Reds have had action in their bullpen. Mentioned the fact that they have 11 relief pitchers. They'll use their third of the night. Denick is out. Andrusik will come on here in the top of the sixth inning with the Mets all over the Reds tonight. 10 to 2. This is our Skyline Chili call to the bullpen. Sons of Anarchy that's premiering Tuesday September the 9th only on FX some four days from now the final season Tuesday night. You know our pregame producer Kent Dream Weaver is a major fan Sons of Anarchy. Well, the new pitcher is Logan on It'll be 37 games now for Logan on the disabled list a little bit this year. But he has been really a measure of consistency really since he joined the Reds and the big league levels in 2010. He's given them over 60 games a year. Earned an average usually down in the mid threes a little bit higher this year. And he's got two out and one on. Trying to get Wilmer Flores for the final out of this inning. Meant to score twice, they have four hits in the frame, 13 in the game. Now, Adrusic is from Shiner, Texas. Now, they're known, of course, down there for the Shiner Bach beer. Mm -hmm. yeah, they, are they serving any of that beer down here at the uh, the craft beer bar along the third baseline? That is a question that I cannot answer. It's a great place. Bruce will handle this ball off the bat of Flores. Andrusik comes on, gets the final out of the inning. Maybe we'll explore that and try to uh, get an answer to you.
1230 on Fox and continues then at 330 starting with Reds live and then game two of the Reds and Mets right here on Fox Sports Ohio that Tigers team they were in first place most of the year in the American League Central and they start the day today a game behind Kansas City and in the second American League wild card spot Oakland and Detroit with Seattle only a half came out in the wild card still with a chance at the AL Central title as well Oakland they are five games behind the Angels in the AL West their fate may have been sealed when they were swept in a four game series last weekend by the Angels. Uh, they are in a delay right now the Detroit Tigers are against the Giants they are losing six to nothing. I don't think that game has gone deep enough. It's only gone three innings, so it is not an official game yet. They're still waiting for the rain to move out of Detroit. Well, apparently, they do not believe it's going to move out of Chicago tonight because that game between the Pirates and the Cubs has been suspended at 3 3. You know, you hate to say it, but here's this Cubs team having won three in a row. If you look at the standings, they're only two games behind the Reds for fourth place. You know, I already did it. I already said it, but I'm going to say it again because I thought my daughter Grace was watching earlier. She wasn't, so I'm going to wish happy birthday to Grace again. She just got dialed into Spock Sports Ohio. And Grace, happy 14th birthday. Your dad loves you very much. And I know you're going to have a great year, just like you had a great day. So happy birthday to you again. And we have some other birthdays. And we'll read them right now. Grace, you share your birthday with a couple of other very fine ladies. Mary Ellen Allenbach from Sydney, Ohio, celebrating 85 years today. And Betty Snyder from Fairborn, 90 years old today. So, ladies, we all wish you, all of us from Fox Sports Ohio, a very merry and happy birthday and a great year. Been that kind of night for the Reds. Even the ball boys are having a tough time. Took a spill down there, up down the right field line. Now he's embarrassed. Hope his girlfriend's not watching. Pena shoots it the other way, but Den Decker will run it down. He got a good jump on that ball. Nice to see Pena hit the ball hard tonight. Not once, not twice, but three times. He's got two singles in that lineup. So two outs in this inning and two line drives one by Phillips one by Pena and now it's bourgeois as you said earlier every hit is a line drive well he's had better success when he hadn't hit it as hard yeah although that's not the idea when you step in the batter's box but sometimes that's the idea when it works out Quick inning here for Cologne as Bourgeois is thrown out. That's the first time tonight on either side that a team has gone down in order.
Triple by Granderson made it 2-0 in favor of New York as David Wright touched the plate. Bottom of the first, Reds get on the board. Number 22 by Devin Mezzarocco is second in two nights. Big RBI tonight last night for him. Home run there. Now this three-run shot in the fourth inning by Travis Darno. That made it 6-2 New York. Granderson again, this time in the sixth inning. Another Mets three-run homer for Granderson, his 17th of the year. As we play into the seventh inning, the Mets have an eight-run lead at 10-2 through six. That's our Honda game summary from Great American Ballpark tonight. Only 1-0 hung on the board. That was in the third for New York. Logan Andrusik, who got the final out of the sixth inning, works here in the seventh. And yes, Cologne is still out there. Cologne 0 for 3 tonight. Quickly in the hole, two strikes. Strike three. He had no interest at all in that AB here in the seventh. We're talking earlier about the, uh, the standings, and here's more specifically what's going on in the National League Central Division race. The Cardinals, they've won six games in a row. They've now opened up a four-game lead over the very slumping Milwaukee Brewers, who have lost nine games in a row, have not won since the 25th of August. The Pirates are five and a half back. They've lost four games in a row. The Cardinals team has done a very good job of not only winning themselves, but taking advantage of the two teams right behind them stumbling somewhat. And they're going to get Michael Walker back now. Well, they did. He, he pitched three innings in last night's ball game. Walker did. Reds still have two series to go with the Cardinals. And yeah, there's still a lot of baseball to play. Mm hmm. Couple of series left in Milwaukee. One game, a one series left here against Pittsburgh. Counting tonight for the Reds, 22 games remaining, 13 of them here at Great American Ballpark, including those last six against Milwaukee and Pittsburgh. And a tough first year, certainly, for Brian Price. Frazier stays with that smash. Throws out Lagares for the second out of the inning. The three faced, three retired by Andrusik. Now gets Matt Den Decker. Decker in this game without a hit. Other than the pitcher, Den Decker and Duda, the only two regulars, so six of the eight regulars in the lineup have a hit for New York. And Decker walks on five. First base runner given up by Logan Andrusik. Reds fans celebrate German Heritage Day at Great American Ballpark. That's tomorrow. That's a 4-10 game. Arrive early. Be one of the first 20,000 fans to receive a Reds Stein 
presented by Pops House 99. Plus, make sure you take advantage of the four for $48 ticket offer. For only $48, you receive four Reds tickets plus a $15 Hofbrau House voucher. For tickets, you can call 513-31-RED. You can visit select Kroger locations, or you can go to Reds.com slash tickets. Those Red Steins, I remember the Steins they gave away last year were very, very nice. I'm sure these are going to be the same way tomorrow. But remember, 4-10 game. Don't show up at 6-30. I'm glad you reminded me of that. Yeah, particularly you. Four ten tomorrow, one ten on Sunday. Now, is the Stein you got last year? Is that the kind of Stein that you just put on the shelf as a decoration, or is it one that actually gets used in the Kelch household? No, it's decorative. Is it on display? I don't know that I would use it. You could, you mm -hmm. certainly could. Yeah. Donald Lutz, he'll be uh, on display tomorrow, probably. Yeah. I'll be out there dancing and. Well, the only German speaking member of the Reds big league team, as far as I know, anyway. Yeah. David Wright, another hit. Just to show you he can pull the ball. His fourth runner being waved around from third, and he will score. That's Den Decker. And it's now 11 to 2, New York. Well, we said David Wright came in not hitting the, uh, the ball very well. He now has a four hit night going. I talked to a scout before the game. He'll remain unnamed. I asked him, how's Wright been doing? He goes, well, I haven't seen him for a while, but you know, his shoulder is really hurting him. He wasn't doing anything at all. I just happened to read, you know, some notes over the last few days because we hadn't seen the Mets since April. So he always, you know, sure. do a little studying. And I kept reading where David Wright, he used the description, I feel like I can be dangerous now, which translates to me like, He's seen the ball good, and he's not the kind of guy you should make a mistake to. And he has shown the Reds exactly that. He waited on a lot of balls, hit him the other way, and he just really ripped his hands through that swing. Lucas Duda now. Run in, runner at second, two out, 11 to 2 in favor of the Mets. Talking about that Pirate Cubs game that's been suspended 3 3 in the seventh inning. It will resume tomorrow afternoon prior to their regularly scheduled game. Desperately trying to snap that nine game losing streak, leading over the Cardinals in the fifth inning in their game, two to nothing. Daniel Corsino now throwing in the Reds bullpen. And there's another walk. So after retiring the first two in this inning, Andrusa gives up the walk to Dendecker, the RBI double to right, the walk to Duda. Here comes Jeff Pico. Getting his sprints in. Darno's already had three hits, three uh, four RBIs. Will be the man at the plate. This is the one thing that if you're a reliever and you're pitching, I can't say that Andrusik's pitching for his big league life because he's a he's been a solid pitcher for several years now with the Reds, but it's certainly is gone backwards as far as control. I mean it's one thing going out here and, and having it handed to you when you're giving up 14 hits and 11 runs. Some might said this happens. 
you know sometimes you make mistakes and hit the ball in the seats but you know when you're laboring out there and you're not throwing strikes and it doesn't look like you're trying to attack the hitter for one whatever reason it is I mean either it's physical or you're afraid to throw the ball over the plate and everybody in the organization hopes it's not the latter. Able to get Cologne on three pitches looking. Lagaris on the hard smash to third. And the last three have reached two via the walk. Well, maybe as part of German Heritage Night tomorrow night, Logan Andrusa can present Donald Lutz with some Shiner Bach. If Bach is a, a German derived beer, is it not? Yeah, I, I, as far as I know. And I then maybe that. Lutz can say a few words in German to the crowd. Not that anyone would know if he was uh, incorrect in what he said. Well, maybe some of the folks here in German and Heritage, Heritage Night would know. Well, I'm more interested in, in the, the actual Shiner Bach than I am the words. Yes, you are. We're going to find out, by the way, if Shiner Bach is sold downstairs. Chris, why don't you get on that? You know some people of influence. Have you been down there to that bar? I've walked by it a couple bar? of times. Man, yeah. oh man, that is impressive. I mean, that's almost worth a trip to the ballpark by itself. Craft beer has really been the thing here in the last, what, five years or so? Like 99 different beers and 99 taps, something like that, along that, the longest continuous bar around. It's almost 300 feet long. And a beautiful piece of work. No question about it. I think it's several slabs of mahogany. If I'm not mistaken, just laid out. I mean, cut and this coming from a guy who really is not a beer connoisseur, right? No, but, but it's very impressive to you. This game's turning me into one. Okay, Harry. Another walk by Andrusik. He's walked three in this inning. All this coming with two out. Here comes Brian Price. Well, you got to feel for Brian Price. I mean, really, it has just come apart at the seams and completely beyond his control. He'll go to the home plate umpire, Alfonso Marquez. So that uh, means a double switch by Cincinnati. New pitcher will come on. New position player will come on as well. Jogging out of the dugout for the Reds is Jack Hanahan. He's going to take over at first base for Brian Pena. So the Reds make a double change here. Daniel Corsino coming in from the bullpen. We'll be back with more in a moment.
a look at tonight's fan photo of the game brought to you by AT&T. There it is, Don. I assume Don is right there in the middle of the picture. Speaking of fans, that young man having a good time at the ballpark on Irish Heritage Night, despite the fact that the Reds are on the short end of an 11 to 2 score at this juncture here in the seventh inning. That's his rally t shirt and his number one rally finger. Sad but true numbers of this game right there here in the top of the seventh inning. As Daniel Corsino takes over on the mound, Jack Hanahan replaces Brian Pena at first base. Jack is in the nine spot in the order, due up second in the bottom of the inning. Corsino made his big league debut in the Baltimore series. Well, we've been hearing about Daniel for a long time and we've seen him in spring training Jimmy you've been down there a lot and young man that took a step back last year I think he was only 22 years old playing in double or playing in triple A last year and I think the competition caught up to him a little bit had a much better season this year young man that's been com compared to Johnny Cueto. They was impressed me since he's come up here is what he just delivered right there. Couple of really good looking secondary pitches. Those are his numbers combined this year double A and triple A, 148 innings, low opponent batting average. Walks are up there a little bit. Foul ball. But if, he, if you think he may have a chance to help you out next year, it may not even be out of spring training, it could be any time during the 215 season or the 2015 season. Now's the time to get him some big league pitches, some innings, and to be evaluated. And in all likelihood, he will be working exclusively out of the bullpen, while not likely to get a start. I said he made his debut in the Baltimore series. Let me correct myself and say he made his big league debut against the Cubs. Here on August the 26th, when he had a 1 2 3 ninth inning against Chicago. Trying to get the final out here in the top of the seventh. Fair ball. Hanahan will get it. Flip it on to Corsino. And that puts an end to the top of the seventh inning. Another run across for New York. Their lead now is nine at stretch time.
He's got a comfortable lead with which to work at 11 to 2. Well, how about our Mazda pitch by pitch and Bartolo Colon? It's the subject of that this evening. He has been awfully good, really just firing just that fastball about 90 to 92 miles an hour, occasional slider. And the Reds have really not been able to do anything at all. They hit the ball hard early in the game a couple of times. Frazier, Mezzarocco hit the ball very hard in the first inning. And a couple of runners on in the second. He bent. He did not break. He has given up just a couple of runs on the night. And here he is in the seventh inning. And only 76 pitches into this game as he works to Ramon Santiago. Been a nemesis of his throughout his career. We talked earlier about the fact that Santiago 11 of 26 a 423 average against Cologne. But tonight. Go for one with a walk. Now 0 for 2 as Lagares will handle this. Seven in a row since the bunt single by Billy Hamilton retired by Cologne. Red scored in the first home run by Mezzarocco in the second. On an error by the pitcher that allowed Phillips to score from third. Nothing since then. Now Jack Hanahan bats for the first time tonight. Had a hit in both the Pittsburgh series and the Baltimore series, two for six on the road trip. Comes in overall in his 18th game, five hits, 31 at bats, a 161 average. Took over at first base when Corsino came on as part of the double switch. Again to Lagares. Two out. Well, I got the official word about the craft beer bar. And? And I want to thank Jeff Pecoro for bringing me up to date on that. It is not 300 feet long. It is 100 feet long. It just seems like 300 feet long if you hang around it enough. But you have. We've seen your pictures. Well, they do have about 90 taps or so there. And they do not have any shine or bock in the stadium. Maybe that will change for tomorrow. Those are rotating beers by and large. Oh, are they? Yeah, so maybe that'll change on. I got a lot of local beer there. Yeah, they do. Pick's not a beer guy either. But he went down and checked it out for you. A lot of IPAs, according to Pick. I like the IPAs. Well, Pick thinks IPA is a pasta dish. Pick does favor the pasta dishes, no question about that. Dan Decker, inning over. Well, Let's go guy, in order. This guy is just uncanny. That is nine in a row set down by 41-year-old Bartolo Colon.
right, as we've told you, give you a chance to purchase seats in a section that you normally can't purchase. It's the scout seats, the premium seats right behind home plate. They can be purchased for any game against the Cardinals Monday through Thursday for just $60. Go to Reds.com slash FSOhio and use the code 14FSOH. That's 14FSOH to get your discounted seats right now. And I'm Jim Day, and uh, you've heard Chris Welsh and Jim Kelch talk about the craft beer bar here, Great American Ballpark, 100 feet in all its splendor. Now, Chris Welsh, you should have known that it's 100 feet long because, after all, let's take you back just before opening day. It was Chris Welsh who got the first pour out of the craft beer bar. So as long as that bad boy is here at GABP, the first ever went to Christopher Welsh. He never met a free beer he didn't like. I thank Michael Anderson for that free beer. Now, why didn't you mention that you'd been down there earlier? In the left field by Herrera and another Mets home run. Dilson Herrera, his second of the year. What beer did you get there? Do you remember? I may have gotten the. Uh, I think that one was the 50 West. What type of beer is well, that? I don't know. I mean, they, they make a lot of different beer. I think there was Mad Tree there. There was there were all sorts of beers, mm -hmm. all the local beers. I just unfortunately didn't have time to sample them all. Oh, but you wish you would have. Had we st had we started broadcasting from the first inning there tonight, we would have had a chance of having a little tasting. A little four ounce tasting of each. But it's a great place. I mean, I think they're about 100 feet, probably maybe 10 different tap sites. And in each tap site, there are a handful of different beers. So that you don't have to wait in line very long. And uh, they've got them all. I mean, I know you're a big craft beer fan. I enjoy them. And uh, there are a lot of ones, maybe some around here that you haven't even had yet. Oh, I'm sure there are. Just adds to the entertainment experience of coming to Great American Ballpark. There's no doubt about it. Folks want craft beer. The Reds and I have brought in not just craft beer, but a craft beer bar. Well, you know, the history of this city has a lot to do surrounding sure. beer. I think at one time, if I can believe this number I heard, that there were 27 different breweries right here in Cincinnati. Bourgeois got a good jump on that ball off the bat of Flores. Who homered earlier? And he's out. Now after seven innings worth of work, Bartolo Colon going to be finished. Off the Mets bench will come Eric Campbell, an infielder, the bat for Bartolo Colon. Cologne goes seven, allows two runs, seven hits, and Eric Campbell is off the bench to bat for him. 85 pitches in seven innings worth of work for Bartolo Cologne. Campbell comes to the plate. 290 hitter this year with three home runs, 16 runs batted in. Buddy Carlisle, a right hander, one of the men throwing in the Mets bullpen. He spent a month down at AAA Las Vegas earlier this year, came up in the early days of May, been here since, and he gets a base hit.
That's now 12 runs, 16 hits given up by the Reds in this game. It equals the most hits they've given up in a game this year. The fifth time the Reds have given up 16 hits in a game. They lost 14 to 9 against Toronto on June the 20th here. That's the most runs they've given up in a game this year. Let's hope we don't see that figure. Mets have had long balls from Darno, from Flores, from Granderson, from Herrera. Four home runs in this game. Fourth time they've done that this year, equaling a season high. Team has not gone down in order tonight. Well, the Reds figure to employ one more pitcher in the ninth inning. It's been Simon, then out of the bullpen, Hoover, Denick, Andrusik, and Corsino. Lagaris in the center, Billy Hamilton ranging. Billy to his right, gets there. Two out. Bartolo Colon going to go four and one to five career starts against the Reds with four different teams. And a couple of starts against Cincinnati with Cleveland, one with the Angels, one with Oakland here last year, and now this year with the Mets. Terry Collins likes what he's been seeing lately out of his club. They come in having won six of their last ten. They will get within two games, barring a momentous Reds comeback, of 500 since the All Star break. Ben Decker 0 for 3 with a pair of walks tonight. In that pitching matchup here tomorrow, Johnny Cueto at 16 and 8, and coming off a victory his last time out against the Pirates. It was that Sunday finale over in Pittsburgh at the beginning of the road trip. He'll make his 30th start of the year. Right side, and Corsino will take it himself to retire the side. Another run across, home run by Herrera. Middle of the eighth now here in Cincinnati.
of every game with Reds Live, presented by Ray St. Clair Roofing, right here on your exclusive home of the Reds, Fox Sports Ohio. Tomorrow, game two of this series, Johnny Cueto going after number 17. Get tomorrow afternoon, 410 first pitch, 330 with Reds Live. Johnny Cueto after number 17 as he closes in on his career high two years ago of 19 against Dylan G, who was the Mets opening day starter. Spent some time on the disabled list this year with a strained right lat. Remember that was the injury that Cueto had not once, not twice, but three times a year ago. Mm -hmm. They'll go at it here tomorrow in the middle game of this three-game get together. Meanwhile, new pitcher on here. Buddy Carlisle. Well, new to the game, but not new to baseball or even Reds fans because Buddy Carlisle, if you go back long enough, you may remember that name. He was drafted in the second round by the Reds in the 1996 draft. To the wall and gone. Todd Frazier. Reds have gone down nine in a row. They get the long ball here from Frazier. Number 24. So he greets the new pitcher just like that with one right out the front door. I wasn't sure if it had enough to get out of here. A little bit off the sweet spot towards the end of the bat, but he got it enough. The ball's been flying here tonight. So Carlisle was drafted in 96 second round by the Reds and then he was pitched a couple of years in the minor leagues for the Reds and then he was traded to the Padres for Mark Kroon. Some people may remember that name. Funny by name by the way is a nickname. His real name is Earl Lester Carlisle from Bellevue Nebraska born in Omaha raised in Bellevue. Not from Mississippi, then I guess. No. But after the, he was with the Padres for a couple of years, they sold his contract to the Japanese league. He played for the Hanshin Tigers. Played there for a few years. Got picked up by Kansas City as a free agent. Went down the minor leagues there. Went between Double A and Triple A. A couple of years later, he was with the New York Yankees. In the minor leagues again, double A and triple A. Then he went to the Dodgers in 2005. So now he's about 10 years in as a professional player, and he's on about his fourth team. And he's just getting started. When he was with the Dodgers, he had an appendectomy, so he was out for quite a while. A year later, he signed with the Florida Marlins in November. He began this con his time with the Marlins down in Triple A, the Albuquerque Isotopes. But he pitched well that year, and then eventually, at the end of the, of May, he was sold to the LG Twins. LG Twins, who happened to be in Seoul, Korea. So when he came back after the 2005 year in December, he got an invite, a big league invite. And a minor league contract with the Atlanta Braves. And he got sent down coming out of spring training, but he got called up and he had one terrific game there. He pitched 45 games or so with the Braves that year in 2006. But he became the 40th pitcher in Major League Baseball at the time to strike out the side on the minimum of nine pitches. You ever do that? I did not do that. No. Whether it be in the big leagues or the minor leagues or college or whatever. I tried every batter I faced too. 
I believe that. So he eventually was outrighted there. That one may not be enough, and it's not. And then he went back to Japan in 2010. So he literally is the definition of Johnny Cash's song, I've Been Everywhere. You're not kidding. And he's still not done. We're only in 2010. and 2011, he went back to the Yankees again. He eventually promoted the major leagues there, but spent most of the time down in AAA. 2012, he's back with the Braves. Minor league deal. And then he goes on to the Blue Jays. And here he finally finds himself before the year signed a minor league contract with the Mets and was called up May 31st. That's some sort of route right well, there. And it wasn't easy even for here with the Mets because he was up for a while when he got called up in May and then they he got designated for assignment when Jonathan Neese came off the disabled list on July the 20th. He signed back with him again and here he got called back up on July the 26th. And here he is pitching in the big leagues against the Reds on September the 5 and he gets the line drive out there by Phillips. So after the Frazier home run the Reds go in order and this one heads on into the ninth inning at Great American. by Chevy. Visit your Tri-State Chevy dealer today and by Cincinnati Children's Hospital who ranks third in the country on U.S. News and World Reports 2014 Best Children's Hospitals. Not a very good night if you're a Reds fan tonight here at Great American. Fell behind early two to nothing. Three run shot in the fourth inning off the bat of Travis Darno. Made it six to two Mets. They added another three run blast in the sixth inning by Curtis Granderson. They won up at that time 10 to 2. They lead now 12 to 3 into the ninth inning. Daniel Corsino, who worked the final batter of the seventh and also the eighth, stays in the game and heads on back to the hill here in the ninth inning. Now the Mets have yet to be retired uh, one two three so maybe Corsino can buckle down and get that done this inning. Nice to see him get some extended run out there. Came in in the seventh pitched last inning gave up the home run and a single but here he is again so. Multi inning effort for Corsino. David Wright spot is due up Josh Satin is going to come off the bench. And bat for David Wright who had a very nice night four hits. Two runs scored, an RBI, a double, a stolen base. Satin will bat for him. Comes in at 103 and 29 at bats this year with this club. Lucas Duda is on deck. Made the opening day roster for this Mets uh, club. Did sat. Now he's hit by a pitch. He'll be awarded first base. So the Mets do not go down in order. 
at all in tonight's game. At least one base runner in every inning. Now Lucas Duda. Three times he's walked once with the bases loaded that was back in the second. Bounces off the shoulder there, looked like of Mesoraco, and back to the screen it goes. That'll send Satin down to second base on a wild pitch. What Mesoraco, you know that what you don't really think about is the catcher. When you have a blowout game like this, when you know you're running through four or five different pitchers, there are 16 hits on the board, a bunch of walks. You don't realize all the pitches that he has to catch and block. And he's given a full effort on every one of them. Hamilton running back for this ball near the wall. Gone. Five home runs now by the Mets in this game. That's a new season high for them. It comes with sat in the board. The Mets have scored in eight. Of the nine innings in this game tonight, and they now lead 14 to 3. That equals the most runs given up by the Reds this year. And at 17 hits, that number marks the most hits the Reds have given up in a game this year. Well, you saw the three pitches we showed you in our Fox Tracks, the location of where they were, all three of them. We're in spots where Lucas Duda likes to swing at him. Up and out over the plate. And what you learn at the big league level that you don't learn in double A or in triple A sometimes even. You get a big guy like Lucas Duda up there, you make a mistake. You usually get a brand new baseball. They don't foul it off here. Hard to believe that that number five home runs is not the most home runs allowed by the Reds in a game this year. They give up six of them to the Pirates way early, 14th of April. It was a little rain delay game, a rain game, wasn't it? I think it was. Another hit now by the Mets. Number four of the game for Darno. I can tell you, Brian Price probably does not want to go out there and make another pitching change. Daniel Corsino has been starting a double A this year. He's been a starter his entire career. While he has not started a game in a couple of weeks, this is only his second full inning of work. This is a guy who is trying to impress. Not only for the rest of this season, but certainly for the future. You know, the first time I saw Daniel pitch in a game a couple of years ago in spring training. And they had a B game at 10 o'clock in the morning, and I think the uh, Seattle Mariners are there, and they brought in one of their top dog pitchers, and Corsino was pitching for the Reds on the other side. And both of these guys were just throwing BBs. I mean, he was really bringing it up there. But we haven't seen that kind of fastball from him since he's come up this year. I don't know whether he's just taking a step back, maybe changing the style of pitching.
back. That other pitcher was Tajon Walker. Wow. Who was, a, who was in that game? I'm just trying to think of who that was. And remember, there were there had to be 40 scouts at that ball game. One of those B games early in the morning. So that was a good year. That was a good year, yeah. Carlos Contreras under the watchful eye of Mac Jenkins now throwing in the Reds bullpen. Carlos had some trouble in that seventh inning Wednesday night in Baltimore. Certainly Brian Price would hope he does not have to go to him as Chris alluded to but Corsino just having all sorts of problems here. Finally gets it out here in the ninth and a strike out of Granderson. Well, we're going to call this our Cholula strikeout of the night. I'm going to crisscross the flamethrower there, but I can tell you that it was a 70 mile an hour off speed pitch that Curtis Granderson comes up empty on, and that is our Cholula of the night. You one of those guys that likes uh, the hot sauce like the Cholula hot sauce on did, most yeah. everything you eat. You know last night we were putting Cholula on some crab cakes. Yeah. That we bought in the ballpark at Camden Camden Yard. Now the, are the crab cakes at Camden as good as say you can get elsewhere around Baltimore. Would at, you? you know what I did. I, I tried to eat crab cakes about everywhere I went. Yeah. So I could tell that there there's some and there and there are differences. And the ones at Camden Yard are absolutely delicious. Really? Yeah, they are as good as anywhere you can find. And the hot sauce just uh, Eve just enhances the flavor. Excellent. Well, you have to patronize your sponsors. Definitely. Any other experiences in Baltimore worthwhile talking about here in the ninth inning of this game? Well, the games weren't all that great. Correct. In case you tuned into those. I went down to Annapolis and looked at the Naval Academy. You know, I've called a basketball game there. I thought it was impressive. Wow, was that impressive. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you go down to a place like Annapolis. And I have been at the Air Force Academy. I've not been at West Point. But it, it makes you want to. It makes you want to have a son or a daughter to go there. Because it is so impressive. You see those young men and those young ladies walking around, and that's a boy, that is an impressive place. Couldn't agree more. That must have been a thrill to do a game there. It was. Indeed, it was. Yeah, we, uh, we pulled in on the team bus for NKU a couple of years ago, got halfway down a, a road, and all of a sudden somebody came out and stopped it. No, you're going the wrong way, and that bus will have to back out. So that bus had to back out this <laughs> long road. And get to the correct one to get to the arena. You know, the one thing that kind of Puzzled me though is the why the Orioles. It was a getaway day for Orioles too yesterday. They ended up going down to play Tampa Bay tonight, and I was curious as to why we didn't play a day game yesterday. Well, there have been uh, there have been a number of situations that way this year as to to why there have been night games. The the the, the, uh, the Orioles had to go down and play the Tampa Bay Rays. They lost three to nothing, so that lack of rest didn't hurt, help them any. Reds didn't get in. We didn't get back to the ballpark from the airport yesterday until around 3 a.m. Well, a walk there to Dilson Herrera is going to be the end of the night for Daniel Corsino. Brian Price out of the dugout again. He said Carlos Contreras throwing in the bullpen. Contreras will jog in, becoming the fifth different relief pitcher to take the mound tonight for Cincinnati.
this ballpark and against these New York Mets. How about Brandon Phillips? Look at this one. Between the leg flip to Cozart. On over to Votto. A double play at 4-6-3. A moment to remember a John Murrell hot dog play of the game from 2012 and the Gold Glover. That Next was a, out in green tonight. That was a cool play. That was really a cool play. Done by a cool guy. That dude does not like getting beat. Let me tell you. Not happy. I mean, his his thumb's not right, but still, guy does not like being beat. I mean, nobody does. Hit hard by Flores out in the left center field, chased and caught by Bourgeois. Trying to get it back in. The ball went a long way off the bat of Flores, but run down by the Reds left fielder. You know, that play by Brandon Phillips and uh, Jim Day put together the, along with our man Matt Sigafoos, the top plays by Brandon Phillips in his career was just outside. The top five. That was not even a top five play for Brandon Phillips when Jim Day and, and Matt Sigafoos, who dials up all of our highlights, put that together. How about that? Who, who does the rating for that? I, I mean, think they did. Wow. I mean, if that's not in the top five. I, I have to see the top five. I, I know that we had a rain delay in Baltimore the other night. You folks who were watching that ball game got to see that. I miss it. But I'm going to go with whatever Matt Sigafoos. He puts it together. I'll go with his judgment on that. This guy just came in a game last inning. It's a second of bat already. Yeah. Took over at third base for David Wright. Reds will send up a pinch hitter for Contreras in the bottom of the ninth to get it started. Bourgeois then Santiago. That's a strikeout of Campbell. So Contreras comes on, gets the two batters he faces, and it comes to an end. Bottom of the ninth, upcoming.
the Cincinnati Reds. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. Well, the bottom of the ninth inning upon us here. The Reds down by 11. Given up 14 runs, the most uh, equals the most they've given up this year. 18 hits. That is a season high against them. What do they say about baseball? It's always great that there's a tomorrow right away. And that's what the Reds will have tomorrow. Not even tomorrow night, but tomorrow afternoon. That 4-10 game will mark the second game of this series. And again, Johnny Cueto will be going for his 17th win of the year. Another terrible number to look at there. 41 games lost by the Reds when they've allowed six or more runs. Team record is 42 twice. They're going to be running the cusp of equaling that. Reds will send up a pinch hitter to start the bottom of the ninth inning. New pitcher on for the Mets is Eric Goodell. Only the second game he has been in in his major league career. 6'3, 190 pounder. Went to UCLA. Chris Heisey pinch hits for Contreras to start the bottom of the ninth inning. Make a number of changes defensively. Josh Satin stays in the game. He's now at first base. Goodell is actually in the four spot replacing Duda. Chris is in the hole, nothing and two. He had those two home runs in the game on Sunday at Pittsburgh. The two run home run. In the top of the fifth inning that tied the game and then in the ninth inning. Against Jared Hughes to give the Reds the win that turned out to be the last game they have won. Juan Centeno is now the catcher for this Mets team. He replaces their starting catcher Darno. On the left field line, that's going to get in in front of Den Decker for a hit. But Chris Heisey, who's really been a better pinch hitter than he's been anything, comes up with his 11th pinch hit of the year. That's the most on this Reds team. Well, he reacted very well to that breaking ball, but I'm still kind of puzzled by the fact that Goodell would even throw him a breaking ball after he threw two fastballs right by him. And then hangs one about thigh high for him. So it's Jason Bourgeois. Who's won this game 0 for 3 reached on an error by the pitcher Cologne one of the few things he did wrong in this game early on. New right fielder Kirk Neuenheis gives way to Lagaris who makes the catch in right center for the first out here in the bottom of the ninth. Here's Ramon Santiago.
Lucas Duda gets a break. David Wright gets a break. Travis Darno, the catcher. Curtis Granderson, the right fielder, all leave the game for New York. Second baseman drifting back, but he can't get it. That's Herrera. That's going to be a base hit for Santiago. Two hits here in the ninth inning for the Reds. Then ties he down to second. Jack Hanahan bats for the second time. This loss will drop the Reds nine games under 500 for the first time this year. Billy Hamilton on deck. Mets have scored in every inning except the third. And in that inning, they left a runner at third base. Red single runs in the first, the second, the eighth. On this Friday night, 29,089, 29,089 here at the ballpark. Bartolo Colon of the Mets, seven innings, two runs, seven hits. Buddy Carlisle, an inning, a home run ball off the bat of Frazier. Now Goodell is when it gets away from the new catcher, Centeno. Runners move up. Said for Hanahan, that's going to get him not one, but two. Two RBIs for Jack Hanahan. His first runs batted into the year. So a single, a single, a wild pitch, and a two run base hit for Jack Hanahan. Makes it 14 to 5. Uh, made possible by that wild pitch. That second runner moves into scoring position and Lays it right over the head of the second baseman. You know, Herrera has had so many of those close ones tonight. And how appropriate that Jack Hanahan on Irish Appreciation Night. Irish Heritage Night, yeah. Heritage Night is the guy that picks up the big hit for a couple of runs batted in. Well, only fit. Jumbo Diaz is going to uh, rather. Uh, Donald Lutz get the start tomorrow night, no doubt, and hit a game winning home run. Part of German Heritage Night. Billy tonight has a hit, he's one for four. Third denied. One and two to Billy. Tied 
Don Frazier waits on deck. Two and two. Hamilton started the day at 267, as he has been most of the year. At the top or near the top. Rookie offensive categories. He strikes out here. Second time tonight he has done that. There are two up. Well, you look back at Billy Hamilton this year, 245 in April. Got better in May at 260. His best month, 327 in June. That's the month that in which the Reds won 18 games. Correct. He dropped to 240 in July, 256 in August. I gotta believe in this is first full big league year. He's a little run down. Gotta be. Frazier bats with hand handed first two out two in bottom of the night. This should end it. Satin has it and the Mets roll into Cincinnati. After a win on Wednesday in Miami, enjoy the off day here yesterday, and they pound out a 14 to 5 win over the Reds here tonight by picking up 18 hits, a season high for them. 14 to 5, the final, the Mets a winner. We have Reds live post game right after the break. <laughs> 